We have started, actually. It's 10 o'clock. I should hit this button over here. 11.02 here. Yeah, we're a couple minutes behind. We well, were just talking the about the, the calendar. This is Scott Stimson from International Computer Solutions. <laughs> Here with the San Carlos Computer Club, where we meet each Tuesday at 10 to talk about tech topics and share our positions in the world. Very happy to see all your smiling faces because I was not happy last week. But again, special thanks to Bill and Cheryl for taking over the meeting last week. Somebody has to do it, <laughs> and they did a great job. Okay, I didn't refer to it as takeover. Billy did, and that goes on. But I said You didn't we, have to try and get the meeting back from him. <laughs> I said we were guest hosts. I agree. You were guest hosts. When I used hosts. to substitute teach, we called ourselves guest teachers. All right. Well, I watched you uh, last week after I was fully conscious and thought you guys did a great job. I followed up with some stuff with some links. I stuck it on the blog post. So I really liked, I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but I liked Bill's uh, uh, choir recommendation. I, I think that would be fun to just try out sometime. I've got some friends that are in bands back home and uh, they might be interested in stuff like that. And uh, I also put a link to the My Alberta you guys were talking about last week how you were finding your, I think it was health and ID status stuff there in Canada. And so I put a link to the FAQ there if some of our Canadian people were interested in more information about that. There's a link on our blog post that'll just go straight to the FAQ. Yeah, that's uh, my digital ID. That's right. That's right. My digital ID. And it's only our province, and um, nobody else in the computer club is from our province. They're from British Columbia instead of Alberta. But. Well, maybe they can use that information to com complain to their province about what they don't have access to. Well, they, they do have something with blood work, but I think it's only in specific situations or something. But yeah, yeah. Good morning, Maggie. <laughs> okay. We're just getting started. Well, like always, we are agendaless. I did bring some of my own topics that I thought would be interesting, uh, as well as some recommendations. But as always, I'd like to hear from you guys. Is there anything that's burning desire of question to get answered or information to share? Fred, do you have anything this week that we would be interested in? Having problems. Well, this week I've been uh, on the road, so I haven't been able to catch up with my email. Matter of fact, I'm uh, almost a week and a half behind. <laughs> well, have you watched anything good? Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> have you Have you watched anything bad? <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's okay you can say of course i have we've all been all kinds living of the covid lifestyle and i'm sure you're yeah. surfing bad tv oh, um, let's see have i gotten um Miss scarlet and the duke on your watch list Maybe, but I'll add it again. What, what I haven't come up with is a good organization on the website for recommendations people have made. It would be really nice to be able to go to some page that was just a list of our recommendations. Even if there was like a tally of how many times it got recommended or people voting them up or down. I just haven't come up with a way to do it yet. So what was it? Charlotte, Miss Scarlet and the Duke? Miss Scarlet and the Duke. And it's on PBS. And you did actually um, tell us about that one. We just don't, I just don't get it down here on PBS. Um, it's uh, late 1800s and uh, 
woman wants to become a private detective, and the Duke is a member of the police force, and it's the two of them working together. It's only about, I think it's six episodes long, but it's it was oh, okay. fun. Well, I will add it to today's list. In the same kind of vein, I have one that I watched. It was a movie on Netflix, A Call to Spy. And it's... Um, Say the, that again. A Call to Spy. A Call to Spy. And it's uh, female um, spies that were recruited and um, sent to Nazi uh, Germany. Well, Poland, France, basically France was the big one. And it was it was quite good. The the one woman it's historically based, and um, she was the first Muslim um, officer to to serve in the British um, intelligence. Yeah, cool. it was, it is, was it, a, it, is it relatively new? I don't know. It's on Netflix. Oh, it's one of those trending in Canada now okay. um, things. So uh, it, I don't think it might be new. The other series that I watched, um, it was a short series too. Uh, Who Killed Sarah? Okay. On Netflix. Who Killed Sarah was a story of um, some young people and, and a, a cartel family. So it's Mexican and... Uh, but it's more U.S. Well, I yeah. watched, yeah, I watched a bit about it. It's kind of like a U.S. U.S.'s um, perception of what a Mexican cartel family would would be behave as. Maybe the uh, yeah, yeah. In the, yeah. the 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 series starts with her accidental her her accidental death, and and then I've only gotten I think two episodes into it, but it's all about well, it wasn't an accident. It was. And uh, I, I guess the did you watch the whole se the whole season? I did, and the the thing is that the one guy is just being released from prison because he was the one that took the fall. Basically. That's right. Yeah, the, for his sister's death, and he didn't cause it. So it's all about finding out, you know, who did, and and truths about family, and yeah, it, it, it's it's pretty good. He gets out of prison like 18 years later. And so it's like 18 years of revealing secrets and, and history that's happened while he's been in jail, falsely imprisoned for the death of his sister. And there's human trafficking. Is this a true, based on true story? Ah. I don't know, because human trafficking is a big issue in it. And uh, the kind of underground, actually, underneath the casino in the basement, um, like a, they're basically running a modern day whorehouse, but it's uh, the way they, they get the the girls for it is um, what the human trafficking comes in. But uh, yeah, it, it's very <clears throat> timely and topical. I don't know if it's based on a true. Yeah, I I got the impression from what little I watched, it's fairly sensationalized. I watched a very dark one called. Oh, Maggie, I'm sorry. I think you're cutting out or you're cutting out for me. I can't hear you. I watched a really dark one called The Serpent. The Serpent. Is that a movie? Oh, I'm having I'm having problems. I don't know why. It's very delayed. <laughs> OK, I watched one called. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we're hearing you now. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the serpent. Okay. This is a this is very dark. It's it's really good. It's hard to stop watching it. It's very dark. It's a true story about a thief turned killer in Asia in the 70s preying on um, what Rick used to call trust fund hippies. <laughs> people that were backpacking through Asia and um, um, didn't have a lot of money on them, but were carrying things like gems and valuables that they weren't, didn't really know the value of. And anyway, it's, it's very good. And Especially it, he's a very manipulative, clever murderer. 
this is a series? Y yes, just one season. On Netflix. Oh, yes. wow. A lot of people like this show. 91% Google TV. It's hard to stop watching it, and you just want to... Okay, you I've... Want him to, you just want him to get caught. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good recommendation. Well... Yeah, we've been looking at that. It looks good. Um, I have kind of a... I don't know about the ladies. Maybe they are like me, too, a little weird in sense of what they like to watch. A lot of things, but... For some reason, I stumbled on The History of Tanks. It's a series, and it's really, I found it fascinating, starting out with the very first FET tanks, which come out in World War I. And I'm particularly interested in that because my grandfather was up. He was an infantryman, and he was up where the old man's land was fighting. And so this few stories that I have heard um, has kept me curious about that period. So this history of tanks starts from how they first think about creating them. And you get to really see not only the drawings, but then how the men's, you know, were put in there and the problems and on and on and on. And it goes up to through current times and you watch the progression of the tanks and the thinking process. And for me, I just find that really fascinating. Of course, I will would never be a tank person in terms of my own fighting ability. I'd probably be the one that would be, you know, going the other way. I hope <laughs> not. <laughs> it just was a real awful time. But anyway, I found that interesting. You might. Yeah, it sounds like what they're doing is is uh, engineers solving problems, learning from their mistakes, and growing and building off of them. I, I I could see you finding that fascinating. And it start, of course, the British were the first to perfect a tank that that was used in World War One. Even though the other countries were playing with it, it was the British that came out with it. So you have to you know, give a hands up. Those Brits really were working hard. And um, Cheryl, the one you were talking about, the women going in to be I Spy, I think it was called. There are some, some other uh, series about that. One is called Churchill's Secret Army. And it was how he developed the spy system. And um, then there's Dark Waters. What's that one in um, Norway? Uh, about going in and uh, the Norwegians were developing the dark water. The Germans were forcing them to develop this oh, water that yeah. could be used for making the hydrogen bombs. Heavy and, water, you know, is that right? Say again? Heavy water? Heavy water, that may be it. That is really good and shows off the British ability to train people and, and what those people were able to do. Um, of course, they're training them from around the world. There are volunteers coming in that want to help. Heavy Water. Um, it's a great movie. Water. Yeah. yeah. And then there's another series that in England that I found interesting, and it was about taking Churchill's secret army plans that they had, that they made up. And they bring in, they're wondering, could modern day British kids, young people, could they survive this? Could they go through this school, learn those skills as fast as the old, the you know, original ones did and be ready to go be spies? This was just strictly um, watching them go through it all and learning what was set up ahead of them. Um, and it, it was not an easy task. These They had people in their, I think, in their late 40s all the way down to early 20s trying to go through this program so i don't know you know i've had a lot of sitting time between my ankle and a few other things <laughs> i just found this kind of stuff really interesting maybe because it's historic mom those but are those are some great <clears throat> recommendations i think you just filled out our whole day of recommendations <laughs> 
Well, good for me. You'll <laughs> turn it on and say, oh, this is, yeah. I don't want to watch this now. Sandy was wrong, but oh, well. <laughs> um, the Churchill's Secret Army, was that a series? Yes, all of these are series that I'm telling you about. I think well, Heavy Water, heavy is, water a is a movie. No. No, it, I don't think, is it a movie? I thought it, I thought we watched it in a series format. Let me double check. Heavy Water traces lineage back to, here, I'll open up the Wikipedia page real quick. Or maybe I won't, because it's not a Wikipedia page. It is something Google has pieced together from all other sources. Um, I'll go to Just Watch. While he's doing that, uh, so a uh, uh, Churchill secret army, and then the one where you said they were training, was that still part of that series? No, it wasn't, and I'm sorry, I cannot tell you the name of it, but I suspect if you look around that Churchill secret army, you know, the things that pop up, it yeah. might come up. I think I found it accidentally by just going into Netflix and going to, you know, historical or war stories or something like that. I'm sure it wasn't a top seller on, on TV. A lot, a lot of times you might find it by looking under more like this. Or since you liked this under or since church you watched that. that kind of thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about the history of tanks, my dad, who was British, uh, was the um, was a heavy duty mechanic, and then he became production manager in uh, a track vehicle uh, production company in in Calgary, and we made yeah. the, and I worked there for summers and and different things too. But um, he made the the tracks that um, would go on the buses to do tours of the glaciers and things like that. But he also was working on stuff to go to Russia to work in, uh, yeah. in Northern Russia. And that's how my dad ended up going over to Russia for a week. Oh. And uh, okay. so yeah, the, the history of tanks and the production of them, I worked in, you know, on the floor and uh, did different things with my dad in regards to those big e equipment. And it was, it was pretty cool. Going, I bet you will enjoy that series then. Yeah. Going back to Heavy Water, it is a series. It's a Norwegian drama, right? Uh, we Nazis give them credit attempt, most of it happens there. Yeah, the Nazis attempt to create an atomic bomb during World War II. German science, scientist lead, leads the secret project in Norway. Hmm. I think... I, I think that this is the right one, 2015, and it's called The Heavy Water War. Yes, I, I think you're right. Yeah. It's uh, For those of you who like to ski, there's some really good cross-country skiing going on there, too, as well. So, And there's been some other movies come out recently about, about that situation and then about the men who did that situation. So... There was one series where the guy goes back to look at the situations that military were in, and um, especially the allies were in that were so life-threatening and they were maybe captive or they were hiding somewhere and, and how they got out was beyond what anyone thought a person, a human can do. I can't remember the name of that either, but he traced the uh, route that these Norwegians that went in to take care of the heavy water had to take to get out of there. And you can see it was not an easy task. And yet I think they all survived. I just sent a message to James, um, James and Carolyn in BC. Like James is usually yeah. on here, but anyways, uh, <laughs> Carolyn's brother lives in Norway and um, so I, I think he, he would find this really interesting and he probably knows a lot about this because James worked um, in a couple of BC, uh, what do you call them? Like museums only, there are reenactments of history and things like that. Oh, yeah, right. so okay. he's got a lot of really neat stories. Well, fabulous. Well, I'm glad that we have like minds. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Churchill's Secret Army is also a TV series. Is that right? Yes. Okay, cool. Hey, and you guys, somebody recommended last week a, a show I was going to recommend as well. So they stole my thunder. But I wanted to re-mention it. Uh, Schitzel, if you guys have not watched this Orthodox Jew Jewish drama uh, from Israel. It is so dry and witty. It, it's it's just it's so entertaining. You and what what I've appreciated about you have to read subtitles, but but you don't mind. It's just very funny. What I've appreciated is how easily I can come and go from it. Yuya has just binged the whole thing. And I've been doing my own thing, but I'll come in and I'll watch an episode or two and and only need a couple of hooks to catch up with what the background dramedy is that's going on. Uh, but it's it, these are those Orthodox Jews. I'm forgetting the terminology form with the black hats and the curls down their cheeks and the long beards, uh, very religious, secular order. And their family interactions and the things that happen to them, the businesses they run. Fred, were you going to say something? Aesthetica Jews, I think it is, or something very similar. Aesthetica Jews? Well, Aesthetic. the other Aesthetic. thing I was going to mention was uh, the heroes of Telemark. <laughs> if they're into Norway. What? Say that again. The Heroes of Telemark. Oh, that's a show? The Heroes of Telemark. Yeah, that's a movie. A, a movie. movie. The Heroes of Telemark. Is Telemark making reference to down to the skiing style? No, it, it's about the uh, uh, Norwegians during World War II and the heavy water production. Oh, all right. It, it's another similar story to the Heavy Water Wars series, but it's a movie. Yeah, and it's 1965. Oh, interesting. Okay. Charlton Heston, I think, was that. Oh, a must watch okay. if you like him. No, Kirk you... Douglas. I'm sorry, I was corrected. Oh, that's better. <laughs> that's okay. I'll watch either one of those people. And and I've gotten into watching some of these older movies, so I'm going to put that on my older movie list. I, I wanted to mention that Schitzel... It is, I, I just going back to that for a moment, what has been really humorous in it is there's a lot of relationship stuff going on and the relationship stuff is so dry, no touching, no real outpouring of any kind of emotion, either physically or verbally. And they're able to create this tension between male and female characters that it, it's just bizarre. You find yourself laughing out loud watching it. So it's an easy one to recommend. And I had another recommendation that's another sci-fi recommendation, which okay. we've been just rolling called Resident, Resident Alien. It's Alan Tunick. I, I don't know if you know him. He's... Well, no, he's a well-known funny guy from all kinds of different sci-fi. Uh, the thing that's popping into my mind right now is the movie um, Firefly and the movie, Ser no, the TV series Firefly and the movie Serenity. But he's just done all kinds of stuff. He and he is he's one of these characters that that he's just. He takes over the role. He reminds me of kind of a Robin Williams when he does a role. I I, I think of him as being the the genie in Aladdin, or or the 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 toy master in Toys. I mean, he, this Alan Tunick is just so funny and so encompassing in whatever role he takes. I uh, most recently I think of him as being in the Doom Patrol. TV show. He plays the main uh, pro, uh, antagonist, but he's in this movie, in this TV show, playing an alien that fell to Earth, living in a small town, and the, uh, he ends up in a situation where he has to become the town doctor. And his, the way he 
portrays this foreign person in in this human body is just, every moment he's on screen you're you're ready to burst out loud he's his facial expression he has to learn to laugh correctly throughout this series and so he's always trying his laugh on but not intentionally like all of a sudden he got the joke and then he's supposed to laugh and and he's just got this ridiculous kind of and each time it gets a little better because he's getting closer to doing it in a more human way the movie is undertoned with his internal monologue so you're always hearing him talk to himself as an alien and his mission was to destroy every human on earth so you're in this kind of campy comedy of errors where in the background he keeps referring to how he's going to wipe everyone out so he's in a bar scene doing shots at, and he comes off as a real nerd because he's not comfortable within his own skin he doesn't know how to dance he doesn't know how to drink he doesn't know how to be so he has, it doesn't follow social cues almost almost an autistic kind of person in fact you get a lot of the characters around him uh, giving him say, some leeway because he must have some kind of autistic characteristics about him. Uh, but his internal monologue is, it'll all make sense when I wipe out millions of people. <laughs> Resident <laughs> Alien. Okay, Resident Alien. And did you say movie or series? It's a TV series. It's the first okay. season. Alan Tunick is the is the main is the protagonist, and uh, I think it's being done on the Sci Fi Channel right now. Has Has anyone watched Radioactive? Not yet. It's on my list, though. It's on my list too. I I haven't started it yet. Maybe tonight. Yeah. That is a series. That's a movie on Netflix, I think, that is about um, Mary Carey. Yes, it is. It's uh, oh wait, I can't watch that. Madam That's Carey. really good. Well, of course, you know anything's really good at this point. <laughs> Anything that holds your attention. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's it's, um, it's a movie. So, mom, really you thought it was well done. Yes, I did. Uh, the actress, the main actress, is particularly good. She's kind of, to me, she's new on the scene, although um, she has done several movies over the last recent years. She's not a household name yet. But she's very good. I don't remember who's supposed to be in that, but... Yeah, yeah. see what I mean? <laughs> hey. She's not quite household yet. Oh, here comes Jim. Ros Welcome. Rosalind Pike. Yes. Rosamond. Rosamond. Yes. She, she did a Western recently that was very good. The first time I really paid attention to her, but of course I can't remember the name. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, I see both the Jims about. have joined us. Welcome. And Caroline, <laughs> Welcome. I hope people got notifications this morning. I'm sorry about last week. Do, do you have Ray Mahoney on your list? I think I do. Uh, let me, I can check real quick. Because uh, I definitely is my intention to have her on my list. I talked to some folks that okay. used to meet with us in, uh, in real life. And uh, they're just not interested in trying to do it this way. And that's that's fine. I mean, I, I encourage him. I said, look, you can you can tune in. You can like Jim's with us right now. I know he has no microphone or camera, but he's with us. Welcome, Jim. <laughs> you don't have to be on camera. And you don't. I'm, I'm sorry. Say again. I was wondering, I was wondering about. Hey, Ed, there's Jim saying hi. And, all. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering about Ed Hudson and also about um, Big Mike. Oh, sorry, I call him Big Mike, but Mike uh, Miller. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think they, they said no way. Eh? I know that um, G Gary Samson said no. He wasn't not interested. Yeah, G Gary's retreated from tech. <laughs> He's gotten farther and farther away from it. <laughs> I talk to him occasionally, and yeah. Um, I'm looking at the list right now. No, I don't see. Did, did somebody? Did somebody want Ray uh, Ray Mahoney? Yeah, somebody should send me her contact because I don't see it in my list here. Here, I'm holding up the card. It's I guess, I'll send it to it's you. It's backwards. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll give you her telephone number. Uh, yeah, but let's do it telephone offline. Let's uh, let's do okay. it when we're okay. not streaming. I don't okay. I I don't want to dox anybody. In fact, oh, when, right. when we when we're doing it like this, you can just assume we're live on the internet. So please be, I, you know, there are things that are real. You may not want to share online. <laughs> so keep yeah, that in true. mind. Sorry about that. Sorry, Ray. <laughs> we were talking to Jim Cunningham the other day. He was looking for the Cody um, episode. Oh, yes. And when I, I went to, to find it for him, uh, to give him the link to the YouTube, it uh, had that warning on it, you know, adult content and... and <laughs> <laughs> You have to approve it and, and verify that you are um, over 21, I think it says, um, that uh, you are okay with adult I, content. I, did I tell you I appealed it and they rejected the appeal? Yeah. Did you, did you ever hear? Yeah, they, they, they rejected it. They stand by it. They, I, I, I don't know. I haven't gone back to watch the whole thing. Was somebody walking around naked? In the, they won't give me any details either. I asked specifically in the appeal to point out the points in the video that make it age restricted and I will modify them because I want it to be a general audience. I mean, I wrote all that in the appeal and they wrote me back a robot letter saying that we stand by our original ruling and gave me no details on how to make a change to it. And I'm tempted. <laughs> I, I mean, I've heard stories across the internet from YouTube producers that that you that you get punished and you don't know why and so i'm not interested in doing it because i just want the access for the small group of people of us that want access to this stuff i mean there there isn't more than 30 people that are interested in anything we're doing and so i would hate for them to ban me at any moment but i am tempted to pull the video down and reload it and see if it gets the same the same response hmm. What video is that? I missed what you were saying. The one where Bill took off his pants. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it, we did a we did a video a few weeks back that outlined how to use Cody to watch TV and movies. Oh right. And for some yeah. reason, they've made this arbitrary decision that it's age related. It's it's age restricted. I you know truthfully, well, it's it's gotten more. Say that again, Mom. It's what was Vivi doing in the background? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, we were all like looking down. What was I wearing? <laughs> was... But uh, it's all right, you know, because truthfully, it's one of the videos that has the most views. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> I, I don't know if that was their intention or not, but thank you, YouTube, for making us more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, the reason they... The reason Jim wanted to look at, uh, Jim Cunningham, wanted to work, look at um, uh, Cody was because they are, they're actually on the road and Linda wanted to watch all of the Oscar nominee movies that she could get a hold of. Oh, yeah. Um, before before the Oscars thing. So um, anyways, we, we convinced him to go with Streamio instead. <laughs> yeah, uh, Streamio is really easy to use and Cody's much more, well, you saw, it's my much more uh, complicated to get set up just to do something simple like that. But at the same time, though, Cody is a, a platform. And maybe there's an Oscars. Actually, now that I say that, Streamio is, it has a framework that allows developers to make specific plugins. Maybe you can find an Oscar plugin for Streamio. You might be able to search through the community add-ons and find one that was built specifically to pull the metadata from each of the, the Oscar-nominated movies. 
And I'm certain that there's a Cody plugin out there somewhere that does that. Hmm. It seems like a natural, a natural fit for those kinds of platforms. Yeah, I think it really was YouTube going, uh uh, uh you're not doing this right. <laughs> you're talking about the wrong stuff. <laughs> I think it was their yeah. way of I think that was the most punishment I could get in for sharing those secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> I mean, not that they're secret. Yeah. I, I, most of everything in on that topic, I've learned from YouTube videos that were not restricted in any way, shape or form. So I don't know what was special about what I was doing. Would I, it have to do with the brand name? I, you were using a brand name? No, not necessarily. I mean, Cody is an open source media project they and so by definition it's it's a um, it's a group it's not one particular outfit it's an outfit made up of a hodgepodge of developers that have come together to work in the in the same software but but their dev developers are not centralized they're all over the world in a classic open source type project let me see but it is a good video if you're interested in using. Yeah, I just pulled up. It's got 30 views. That's almost 10 times more than any other of my videos. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> well, wait, it's all for posterity. <laughs> What's that? All right. B Banned in Boston. It's good for a book. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> So it is a good video, though, if you're looking at trying out Cody. And the way I approach Cody is single purpose because it is such a large platform of various com combinations of configurations and add-ons. I really look at it. I think it's easier to digest as a single purpose thing. So there's something like I think the Oscars would be an interesting way to do it. You know, Google Cody Oscar plugins and see what pops up as a recommendation to watch Oscar nominated movies and then go after installing that one plugin and using that one plugin. <laughs> I've gotten through my recommendations. Does anyone else have anything to add to our list before I call it good? I think that this is a large list. Thank you all. And I will stick them on the blog post from today's meeting, as, as I do. I, what I try and do is grab a synopsis from Wikipedia. And I, I link it to Just Watch so it can help you find where to stream it from a service online. I have brought some topics. So James wasn't here, but... Oh, go ahead. Cheryl. So James wasn't on when we were talking about it, and Sandy was telling us about a couple that were uh, Norway related. Oh yes. So I I, I wanted yeah I thought of the, of you guys. We are uh, we have a, I have a brother in law that lives in Norway. We were talking about these had to do with the nuclear. We, we okay. You want me to go? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> We, we were talking about um, something I was watching about the history of tanks and starting with World War I. And that led to our talking about heavy water because of Churchill's secret army. And that led me to remember I watched something called Churchill's secret army. And they're all series that relate to the spies that were sent behind the lines and how the English trained them or how Churchill's secret army was uh, was formed and trained. So yeah, we just watched the last one last night. All right. Oh, of the did tanks. You find that is fascinating as I did. I wonder. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was very interesting. It was. Um, they took modern people and put them through the uh, the training for uh, World War II um, under underground uh, workers, and and then they were would have been prepared to go and and uh, drop them into France is what they were. They had, you know, they got their secret identities and uh, and put sort of regular people in in boot camp, 
boot camp kind of situations, you know, letting them sleep in a haystack overnight and things like that, you know? They used the actual, I mean, they had actual clothing, they had the instruments, yeah. um, they had to yeah. learn to parachute because, because they were, these mm -hmm. spies were parachuted in um, it, overnight. And you can imagine how dangerous that was for the plane and the parachuters. And these people and, and their drive to correct things, I guess, to do right, was, are really impressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, even the you can volunteers. risk what they have. Yeah. yeah. Well, even the volunteers that decided, you know, that they were saying, can modern people, could they survive this and be ready to do the same thing? And I don't know that they proved that very well. Do you? Did they? Do you feel that way with that particular? I well, think I think that the, one of the things was that they went from I think sixteen to six uh, volunteers, and so they weeded yeah. ten people out of the crowd as they went along. Some of them said, "This is not for me," but I, I think it's it's like uh, you know SEAL training or something like that. You know, there there's a lot of people go in, but there's only yeah. very few come out the other end that are actually ready for it physically, emotionally, and mentally. And then when you see the statistics of those that survived, um, uh, that twenty percent, twenty percent survival. Wow. Yeah, very few. Twenty percent survival. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah, they kept go amazing. going until they kept going until they got caught. Basically, is what they all did. Which one of these that are we was, talking about? This is Churchill's Secret Army, I think, isn't it? Oh, okay. Yep. Yes, it's worth it. The, the one that I started with was just a movie on Netflix, and it's called A Call to Spy. And it's just oh, uh, four girls um, and, and the woman that recruited them. And, uh, yeah, only one of them survives. Certainly not for everyone. And, no. and uh, trying to sort of hide in plain sight is a, is a great concept, I think. Bill, you and I wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, outside of recommendations we do have some topics i don't know if you guys have brought some topics with you but i've got a few here uh some of them were sent to me by you guys uh, some of them i came up on, with on my own i uh, one of the things i thought was interesting and easy to digest is a new kind of paint has been discovered the whitest ever could help cool the earth which is something we need right now with uh, the climate crisis we have this is actually a paint that reflects 98 percent of sunlight and radiates infrared heat into mm. space it's actually supposed to cool down substances up to 10 degrees below ambient temperature so it actually will eliminate the need for, for some air conditioning. This has just been, they've been researching it. It's just been announced. They're going for a patent now. The, uh, where's, my, I actually had some notes here. Do, 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 do. What they have done, there are three things that make this stuff work. One is they changed the chemical that they're using as a pigment. You know, we've had white paints for a while that'll drop temperatures. You're supposed to paint your roofs with them. The, the current technology is using this titanium dioxide, which apparently I was not an expert in this until about an hour ago when I was reading this. this. But, but titanium dioxide sucks UV uh, radiation and actually heats up. And so there isn't the possibility of radiating that heat. It may radiate some heat, but the UV that's coming in actually ends up being absorbed and it makes the substance um, generate some amount of heat. And so it's kind of defeating the purpose. It's actually in the equation. And so they've switched to something called barium sulfate, which doesn't absorb UV. It actually reflects it back into space because I guess very few things absorb UV uh, and heat up. 
And so just by reflecting it back out into space means that it's, it's, it's leaving the planet, creating a cooling experience. Another thing that they've done differently is there's a high concentration of this pigment, like the, this chemical that they put in the paint is uh, 60% of what the paint is, and that plays a real role in it. But the most uh, interesting thing that they've done is they've fortified the, the particles of this substance in varying sizes, and that's very important. These little white particles in the paint at different sizes causes a variety of different refractions in the light and allows it to disperse away from the substance. So it allows UV to disappear and the light not to accommodate, uh, uh, to accumulate up to 98%. It has this, it, they refer to it as the brightest white ever. It's brighter than, than snow white. So all that being said, I find that very interesting. I'll put a link to this. But what I thought you guys would appreciate is that this is going to be on the market in the next year to two years. It can be produced in the same way normal paint is produced right now. So it'll fit right into our paint infrastructure. And it will be priced a similar to what to these kinds of paints cost right now. So there there isn't going to be some astronomical price for this. this. This is a technology that will be immediately within reach to, to be used. And there is this quote that I love. Well, let's see what this whole thing is. The researchers say the paint could be on the market in one to two years. Traditional means of production, similar prices. Painting a roof of a thousand square feet basically 93 square meters would give a cooling power of 10 kilowatts. That's more powerful than the central air conditioner used by most homes. So, I mean, what you're looking at is if you have a thousand square meter, square foot facility, just painting the roof would dissipate 10 kilowatts of heating energy that's pretty impressive mm. not not quite painting well, solar that. panels but what's that bill i said well that's pretty impressive if you live in sonora and your main problem is heat but our problem is heat in the summer and cold in the winter so it, your house would be colder take more more uh, power to heat it in the winter time if you painted your roof white here. Yeah, maybe. But do, is your roof already white with snow on it? Oh, the snow doesn't last very long. No? And what? No. how is daylight uh, in your area? Like, like in Anchorage, it just yeah. wouldn't matter because daylight in the winter goes down to four to five hours. <laughs> well, we're probably at the very shortest day is... Uh, six hours maybe of, of some sunlight uh, you know like maybe two three hours of it overhead but in in, in the summer we we are uh oh gosh 14 15 hours of sunlight yeah yeah so maybe <clears throat> anyway yeah, yeah but maybe the it would be marginal differences on either side in a in an area like that you're definitely right about here in sonora arizona I mean, I could see you painting parking lots with this kind of paint. Oh, God, yeah. You right? You could actually walk on them. Yeah, you could walk on them. But if it's going to dissipate 10 kilo kilowatts of heating of thermal energy for every 1,000 square feet, you could immediately start turning roadways into cooling systems. <laughs> well, that, that, that'd be pretty exciting to have white yeah, roads. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You'd, you, you, all your, all your indicators would have to be in a, a, a different, a different color, right? Like your, your black lines, black lines. That's right. That's what I was trying to get at. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think that's coming uh, this week anyway. No, but it's a very promising technology. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. 
I another thing that uh, did Bill, did you send this to me? This is nuts. This uh, webcam project where it looks like an eyeball. Yeah, I did. Oh my gosh, it's really creepy. The idea is this: it, it's it's some some research project. There it is, right there, made to look like an eyeball. The uh, it's to give you, I don't know, this the psychological interactions of something watching you while you're on the internet. Can you guys see that thing? That's yeah, creepy. Creepy is right. Ugh. <laughs> how, how'd you how'd you like to be watching some creepy movie? And uh, in the at night, and this thing looking at you, blinking once in a while. Right? You're. It's just looking down at you as you're watching porn. It's like, yeah, yeah, right. That's yeah. what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> looking you up and down, like, yeah, you're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I just thought it was just. It, it, absolutely amazing what people will spend their time inventing well yeah and this is this is a study right they're 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 studying the psychological implications of of you being made very aware of your your um behavior being watched it's definitely no fiction that your webcams can be intercepted and somebody's out there on the other end watching you through your webcam, whether you're aware of it or not. <laughs> but it seems to be just as much uh, art as it is research. They're not building this camera. You're not going to buy this camera and put it on your computer. Uh, yeah, it's... I thought, I understood it to be a one-off. Like it's they they made one. They, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think they'd at least have two? <laughs> the goal of our project is well, not to develop a vision. better design for cameras, but to spark a discussion. We want to draw attention to the fact that we are surrounded by sensing devices every day. That raises the question of how that affects us. So yeah. A paper, a project, and a it, strange in, uh, invention. It might be it might be really effective as your home security camera. If somebody got broke into your house and the eyeball starts wandering around watching you, you might be a little bit intimidated. Oh gosh, put them on the Roomba so that like when there's a motion <laughs> sensor at the door, the Roomba rolls out and starts blinking at them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on it already. <laughs> hey, you know, in on that note, I've somebody sent to me, maybe Richard sent it to me, this great Ars Technica um, article on home automation without subscription services. And I was thinking specifically of you, Bill. There you go. The... Because so many of our services right now, now you get ring doorbells and uh, ring cameras, you buy them, you, you buy the subscription service, but you also buy all the products in that line, like the Philips Hue bulbs, so that everything fits together. And then you manage them with a cloud service that could fail at any moment, and then your smart home uh, doesn't work because you can't turn on the lights because you can't connect to the internet. And so this is a really beefy article talking about, wait, well, the title is how to achieve smart home nirvana or home automation without a subscription. And it's using a piece of software called Home Assistant that will run on an Intel-based computer or a, a Raspberry Pi. In fact, they recommend the Raspberry Pi 4. And it would do all this monitoring and allow you to set up what they call our flows of activities. A flow being something like 
as the sun is coming, going down, start uh, raising the lights in the living room. Right? There would be a scheduled task that would be bad, that would be triggered based on what time it is. And there could be like this slowly rising of the lights as the sun's going down. And you could program that kind of thing that as a flow using this software and this interface. And these are activities that you would normally offload to a cloud service to take care of for you. This can all be done within your own home network. It is a lot. This isn't a casual read. This is a document to go back to as you're trying to achieve this this bliss of not having to pay for a subscription service. And this software home assistant, which I'm not familiar with, I'm going to start making myself much more familiar with, uh, does have a subscription model. So it's kind of a little tongue in cheek, uh, hypocritical, because they are trying to offer some services that are easier for them to do for you than for you to try and do on your own. But it is completely open source software and it has what they call integrations. It has over 1,700 integrations in it. And what that means is being able to use different manufacturer uh, light bulbs and doorbells and security cameras, sensors. Does uh, anyone have anything on this topic they're interested in? adding or asking a question. I'm not an expert at this at all. So I'm probably, if you have a specific question, it would be a Google search for me. But what is... Know, Bill, Bill's, been, Bill's been working on some of this stuff. He, he's just busy in the kitchen for a minute. But um, he, he um, you know, our goal is so that he can have the virtual... Um, cameras, the lights, all the, the smart home stuff that we've set up, controllable from Mexico. So, uh, you know, he, he's, he's working at setting up these things. Um, he's got different ones, like every time we buy a light bulb or a plug-in or um, like the Amazon Dots and things, they, they all have their own apps. And that, the, the robot um, vacuum cleaner has its own thing. So he... he routinely is making different routines and and trying to bring them all together trying to try because there is a there there's this gray area between absolute bliss all this stuff working together as one and just being a remote control from your phone that is different for each manufacturer's device yeah, so that, that's the yeah, that, networking thing. But the other thing I wanted to tell you about was one of the commands he uses to turn on um, the music, the lights over the pool table, the, you know, to the heater that's down in the basement because it's been chilly down there. They all turn on at the same time with bar on. Only sometimes the echo hears bark. And all it does is, is bark like a dog. So we have our security system of a dog barking. We don't own a dog. But, you know, it, it goes. And uh, he, he does swear at her a few times. But they, they eventually get what he either wants on or off. That's, that's rather rather handy, too. I mean, uh, the old way, the old security systems in the cities was to have a recording of a Doberman barking at the door when you... Uh, when somebody knocks on it, so we could have our own barking Doberman uh, in the house when somebody knocks on the door. Hey, Jim, I just saw your recommendation here in the chat. I'll mention it in just a second. I just put a link to this article, Bill. I think you'd find it fascinating. It looks like a great project. I think, I think I'm going to get Emily and myself to work on it. She's got a Raspberry Pi that we haven't done anything with. And so I'm going to encourage her to spend some time with me on this, putting together this uh, this uh, home assistant software. And I haven't uh, I haven't forgotten you either. If, if, when we get down there, I'm going to have a uh, one of those uh, monitoring plugins for you too, the one that monitors the, the power usage as well as being able to turn it off and on. Oh, cool, 
cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I mm. think this this kind of project in this I I stuck it in the chat. If you're interested in the article, I'll also put it in the blog post from today's meeting. But if you're looking for a way to bring all these things under one uh, all-encompassing system, so you're not you're not fidgeting with different apps for each one of these activities. Uh, this is looking like the way to do it. And this looks like a great reference point to start from. It's uh, compatible with a whole slew of different manufacturers and uh, can be integrated with all the, the digital assistants as well. Well, just gives me a reason to buy some more stuff. Yeah. <laughs> great. <laughs> what else we got going on this week did you guys hear that uh, in the states there they biden just announced everyone is eligible for a vaccine they've got plenty everyone no matter yeah. what age you are yeah. i thought it was 16 and up well yeah all yeah. adults all adults yeah 16 and up. I guess that's not okay, an adult. I have an appointment for Friday afternoon. <laughs> Hopefully that means we're the, to the point to be able to share some of the vaccine that we now have stockpiled. Pick us. Pick us. We need more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both. I, I'm hoping it's, I hear them say Canada and Mexico. So I'm hoping that's first choice. It's to, yeah, we're to the vent. Uh, it would be an, an advantage to the United States to have the neighbors well vaccinated, I suppose. That's how Mexico was feeling I'm for a long of, time. Glymus <laughs> uh, has been doing second doses this week, and I haven't had my first. And so one of my friends suggested I go, Thursday's the last day, suggested I go at 5 o'clock Thursday. No. And if they have any vaccine left over since it's identical to the first dose, See if I can convince them to give me a. a but you haven't a had shot. a first one yet. The what? How Mexico? No, but it doesn't matter because they're. How, how's Mexico? Because they're exactly the same. How Mexico's been doing it is the only people that are getting shots right now are the people getting their second dose. The right. So they know exactly. But the idea was, they can't keep it after Thursday. They have no way to store it apparently, and. So Thursday at five o'clock, go in. If they have any spare doses, maybe they'll give me my first injection. But if not, I have a backup appointment in Tucson Friday afternoon. Yeah, I, w I was going to say the way they're doing it, I don't think they would be able to schedule the second dose. I mean, sure, absolutely try and do it. It'd be interesting to see what happens. Because the way I understand the way things have been working is the P they need to be able to give you a second dose so they have to have a plan for that right and right now but but when they do a, when they do a first dose again i'll just go get my second one because they're exactly the same but right now the they same don't have amount, a amount the same chemical makeup sure sure but identical. right now they don't have a plan for the first dose Right now, they they don't have a date out there <laughs> for the first dose for what they've told I us. I could always go get a, uh, I could always, I can always get a second one in the states when I'm up there sometime. Yeah, I just want to get at least one. I know that I'm yeah, waiting until the, the middle well, of next you, month. That was the last word. Was for my age group from 50 to 59 is going to be in the middle of May, and there is no specific date yet. And it's really important to send you something second because shot I... is the same as your first right. shot. Right. Well, and, then, and you can wait. Yes, it has to be. It has to be the same. The, the same but manufacturer. It doesn't matter the right. order because the first and second shots. Yeah, they're exactly the same. I have something to to send you, Scott. But sure. I want to make sure I remembered correctly. Okay. I think. Are you, are you waiting for a second shot or your first? No, no, my first. And that's what I'm saying is they haven't scheduled our first shot yet. So how do they deal with your second shot if they're giving away okay. first shots? Okay. And and I, I mean, if you've got the time, I'd be really yeah, curious right. to yeah. know how they deal with it. But I wouldn't be surprised if it falls apart just because of the way 
Mexico has I, I, everything yeah, scheduled. I, I, I have, I can go in and I can go in and I could go in and say I forgot to bring my card for my first shot. That's one option. Yeah, yeah. The other option is just to tell them the truth and tell them that I can't get it, can't get in and I need it because my husband has. May it, my husband's really um, he's in in one of those um, you know dangerous we, categories. I got it. He, he won't even get the shot. He's, I, his doctor told him not to not to. Oh. Get. Well, I got I got to be fair. Actually, I get caught up in how Mexico has been dealing with this versus the way Mexico deals with situations that are unique. And in this case, they seem to be uh, failing good. Like if you show up and you don't have all their data, they still will give you a shot. They'll figure out a way to give you a shot. That's what's been happening. And and so you may just find that they would give you your first shot because they got to use the va Like you said, they have to use the vaccination before it goes bad and they just write out a card with your date on it and just say right. you need a shot yeah a minimum of three weeks right. from now <laughs> and then you could show up wherever saying this is when i got the first shot <laughs> so i i have to backtrack on that because they have been failing good yeah i made sure that i i Um, and it doesn't, you're, they're going by alphabetical name. And I have some friends whose last name started with a B and they waited four and a half hours in the sun to get their second shot. Yeah. Yeah. My, I'm not you, sure which location they went to, but at my least mother, they got it done. My mother-in-law got hers done, but Yuya was telling me she met up with some folks there that had been waiting like that for a, a long period of time. And Yuya and her mom didn't have to wait that long, but people with with that last name had to wait that long. I I don't remember what letter or name it was. I I just remember anecdotally the experience. Well, we're still waiting for number one. Friday. Yeah, yeah what's up with Canada? What's up with that? Oh well, we're we're, uh, we're having our uh, biggest surge yet. Wow! Wow, that's just yeah, amazing. We're, we're in the same thing. Is this still, one of the variations that's coming through now, or is this still the original surge? <laughs> no, we have the variants are out of control. We we've been yeah. waiting patiently for. That's, we, we've been waiting patiently for Santa Cruz County, Nogales, and finally got an email, I guess it was last week, end of last week. We're very sorry you were next in line for your Johnson & Johnson, but it has been pulled, so you need to re-register. Oh, no. So that would have been nice to get a Johnson & Johnson get it over. Now, it's, now you can't get it. Cheryl, what were you going to uh, say there? Anyway. Yeah. Um, we were talking about a surge in COVID infection. Uh, right now, we are we are shut down uh, as much as we've ever been, and um, the provincial uh, there, there are some borders that are being um, manned, and you can't go between provinces between like between states. Ontario for sure. Um, Ontario to its next one on either side, and in BC where. James lives. I'd like to hear more about it. James, have we been hearing that they, you have to have, um, you have to stay within your own health authority. You're not supposed to travel outside of your own health authority. And then we, Bill saw something this morning about the ferries aren't taking any bookings for RV vehicles to go by mainland over to the island. That's true. You you, uh, you have to have a pretty good reason to, uh, to get an, an RV on the, um, on the ferry these days you can't that, just go over and say i'm i'm looking for fresh air to come to the island so and and then here on the island it's uh that's right that's right because there is um all the variants are on the island and we're trying to keep them in the communities that they are if nothing else you know but they're, they're spread all over the place we're, we're staying to ourselves yeah, and on friday we get our our um our vaccines <laughs> Friday will be the first, first. one's Pfizer's three blocks from home. Yay. Yay. For our first, yeah, for, for us. And, and uh, it's because of my age and Carolyn's in on my uh, coattails. 
because uh, you can bring your spouse. I don't know if you guys are paying attention plan. to our our so group it's, it's, chat, it's, but but uh, Jim is is adding uh, Safeway, Walgreens. Walgreens was great for us, he says. Fries, if you're in the states, but I think in the That's states, negative. yeah, there isn't a problem in the states. This is in Canada and Mexico. What a turnaround the United States has made in this respect. I mean, it's just a full 180. I wonder how that happened. How did that happen? It, it couldn't. <laughs> yeah, how did it couldn't happen? be leadership, could it? Scott, I was I was going to add when we were talking about the states having surplus and the possibility of, of giving it to Canada and Mexico. It'll be nice to know that it probably won't come with preconditions on it to either, like we have to bow down or something. That's right. Leader. It doesn't need well, the president's we'll signature on it. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. Maybe. Was... Oh, God, yeah. That... What were you saying, I Mom? Would think, or I would Bill? Think... Or... Oh. With we... this president, I don't think there's, you know, we aren't, you aren't going to have to bow down to him. At least we haven't yet. I don't think we ever will. So that's good news. <laughs> I was I was going to say that it, uh, at least with this your guy as his current president, you don't have uh, his name on all the vaccine vials either. Probably that's right. That's right. More cards that go out that say you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. I have run out of topics. Except Jim did want to mention uh, Pluto TV. If you guys aren't aware of, it's been an app and a service for a very long time. I think it's currently owned by Viacom CBS. But what they've been doing recently is long, a large catalog of real-time TV. And Pluto TV is available as an, as an add-on to Kodi, but it's also available as a standalone application that you can load into your Android device. And it, it is free. It does advertising. In fact, here I'll read. It says, Pluto TV is your ticket to free TV. If you're tired of paying another monthly streaming bill, Pluto TV is one of the best free streaming services out there. The ad-supported service offers more than 250 live channels, as well as on-demand movies and TV shows. Oh, it's also available on an Amazon stick. And I was thinking it was available as a Plex add-on as well, if I remember right. And that's Pluto, like the cartoon character. Or the planet, I think. It's not a planet, I don't think, anymore, unless they just renamed it. Downgraded. Downgraded. Yeah. Well, Pluto <laughs> TV was kind of a, a joke for a long time. Uh, it, because what it would stream is it would stream web content. It would stream uh, uh, YouTube channels, but in a timeline and things like that. And it was just stuff you could go after on your own. You could have found in and not very interesting stuff, but its most recent changes has turned it into a really a powerful source of live TV. Lots of channels, lots of and known channels. Sports and tech and all kinds oh. of stuff. So it's a great Thanks. recommendation from from Jim here. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. So here's what it looks like in the Google Play Store, Pluto TV. So this is just an app for your Android device. Will it work on Macs? Uh, that's a good question. It would work... I mean, right off the bat, it would work in a Kodi installation on a Macintosh. Is it Macintosh It is in the iOS store, it looks like. Oh, good. Or in the, yeah, in the App Store. This is, so yeah, it looks like it's available there. Great iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Apple TV. It's on the Apple TV as an app. Perfect. That's great. Perfect. So that's a great recommendation. Thank you, Jim. Well, we're talking Apple. Uh, 
what is your feelings about the A12 and the A14 chip that they're using? The A12 and the A14? Correct. Well, the A14 is the latest chip up till this uh, M1 chip. Like, I don't think they changed the A14 when they released the new M1 chip. I think they're just... The A12 has been around for a number of years now. It's the stock chip for the iPad. Both of them are awesome chips. It's just the A14 is is insanely more modern. It's the one that you find in the um, iPad Pros. So if you're going to use an iPad for heavy lifting, you would definitely want the, the A14. But if your iPad use is really a consumption device, books, movies, then then I always recommend that base iPad, and that comes with the A12. I, I recommend the base iPad just because of its price. It's bang for a buck. It's buck, yeah, it's bang for the buck. Because it's a, a very sophisticated machine for very little money. As the iPad Pros start getting really expensive, but then you do have that A14 processor, and that is really video editing. That's that's Photoshop editing. That's um, using it as a music studio. It's architecture. It's it's those kinds of things in my mind, at least from the marketing. The Air now has the 14. Say that again. The iPad Air has the A14. Yeah. The new pros are, aren't out with the 14 yet. They're still running the 12. Are you certain? I thought it was the pros that were running the 14s now. I thought that was the big, big bump. Hop over to Apple real quick. Pro. They're about, you know what's going on right now, Fred? This is a great topic that I forgot all about. Uh, Apple's announcing stuff as we speak right this moment today. I thought so, they weren't put that until June. Yeah, and then they had this surprise announcement. Okay. So they're supposed to be. In fact, now that I say that, I just heard that on a podcast. Apple announcements announcement today. Apple announcements today. Yeah, people are following up two hours ago. T minus 20 minutes until today's big event. So that was two hours ago. They must be done with the event. So I will be going back to that later this week and seeing what they announce. First ever special event of the year. Garbage and recycling. Spring Loaded is the name of it. It's an hour event. Yeah, it's already taken place. Financially, but by the tons of atmospheric carbon removed by each investment. Our goal is to remove more than one. So they may have a. Uh, oh, look at this. Places, the back of IMAX. Colored. It's the first thing you'll see. Colored so IMAX. That would bring a sense of joy to any space. Next. Let's check out the striking side profile, where you really see the profound impact of M1. That's a desktop computer. With That's impressive. iMac has moved closer to our vision to make the computer disappear. And while we've had the same great design for several years, we haven't had the technology to take the next big step until now, because M1 has enabled us to get closer to that vision than ever before. For comparison, well, that's not an M1X. The previous iMac. Well, we won't waste too much time on this, but this is going on right now. They've got a in whole fact, new lineup coming out. In typical out. use, IMAX stays under 10 decibels, which is barely audible to the human ear. Together, these two I'm getting sucked in. I need IMAX to turn it off. Look how thin that is. Oh, my gosh. The result is a design that's much more compact and just 11.5 millimeters right. thin. Look at that. And with an even smaller footprint, it fits easily into many more spaces. And they Next, have financing, has they say to Scott. You know we have financing. <laughs> so on the new iMac, 
we made the display uh, an expansive <laughs> 24 inches. By narrowing the borders, all right, we all right. fit I'm the significantly it. big- I'm stopping it. Scott, like, Scott, pull yeah. out, pull <laughs> out, pull out. It's like eating chocolate. You just got to cut yourself off. <laughs> I run out one of the two. Oh, God, we, we saved his soul. We saved it. I appreciate that, guys. I will watch it later with envy. <laughs> if only I had money to burn. Put the web link up on the today's I'll, stuff. Yeah, here, I'll stick it in the chat, and I'll also put it on today's. Sometimes I can't get the the blog post out for a couple of days, so I like sharing it here in in chat, so you've got it. And you're not waiting until Saturday when I finally get everything put together. Well, I think we're reaching the end of this meeting. I do have other work today that I have to get off to, but uh, we do. How I can stick around a while longer if anybody has anything else they'd like to add to today's meeting. I thank you guys all for showing up. Um, just need to ask you a question um, out, of, out of the club, Scott. Okay. Well, why don't you hang back after we sign off and we'll, we'll have a conversation. Okay, great. All right. Any and, uh... Uh, I have a question. Uh, t can we get through to Yuya on, on the site, or do, do we have to get a special way to get to Yuya? Oh, well, you can reach her through email. Yeah, you can get to her through our website, internationalcs.net. You okay, can you you can call her directly, too, I, on her cell phone. If you, if you don't have any of that contact information, I can send it to you. But uh, All right, thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Anyway, and, and I got to get going because Carolyn needs to go on another another Zoom meeting. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, Jim, glad you're here. We'll see you next yeah, week. Uh, so, 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 sorry I was late. And, and Cheryl, you didn't get your hair cut after all. That was 12 years ago. You guys really need to pay attention to what was on. <laughs> I, 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 I thought it looked so nice. <laughs> but anyway. No, no. Yeah. Well, yeah. The face looks 12 years younger. Well, maybe maybe that's so. it. I thought, uh, I thought uh, that what a what a do. <laughs> anyway. So I take it easy. See you later. I, I want, See you, Jim. I want a makeover I, that I, year. So I want a makeover and they, they dyed my hair and, and cut it short. And yes. I hated it, but other people are looking at it today. But it was a memory. There you go. Memories. Is that on Facebook right now? Now I need to go see Cheryl from 12 years ago. That's right. Let's go right here. Bye bye. See you, Jim. Bye. Anybody Scott, else? I got a question for you. Sure, Bill. Go ahead. Well, you post these things on the chat, but yeah. as soon as. Uh, how do we get back to them if we just want to get on to the, to the chat? You can't. You got to take a moment and just, just pull yeah, them up okay. and make your own notes. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah. I thought there, like there, I have to. Sorry, Jim. Go, go ahead, Bill. I, I, I thought I had to, uh, to open them up. I thought they disappeared as soon as they, uh, the, the uh, club shut down. Yeah. yeah, I I usually open up uh, any links and I leave it open so after the meeting I can I can find them and either save yeah, them or read them or whatever. That's exactly what I've done here. That's exactly okay. what I do as well. And actually, you know, in that respect, I I've got one more recommendation before we go. If you haven't seen Session Buddy, Session Buddy is a plugin for a Chrome web browser that allows you to do something like open up a bunch of tabs and then save them. Oh. So you could you could have a dozen tabs open in Chrome and go, well, I can't read all these right now. And you go to Session Buddy, it sees your, your tabbed full browser and allows you to save that so you can come back to it later. In Is fact, that I, an extension? Yeah, well, yeah, it's a plug-in for Chrome. In fact, here, I'll, I'll put it on my screen right now. Uh, does it work for Opera? Uh, yeah, it does. I think it's a different – it's a different it, – it goes through the Opera extensions, but yeah. So, I mean, here I am with a bunch of tabs across the top here. It doesn't matter what they are. I, I'm just going to use it. And here in Chrome, you get this extension icon in your toolbar. And I'm just going to go down here and go to Session Buddy, which I already have installed. 
and this is what session buddy looks like and it shows me right off the current window and has all these tabs and now i can just choose to save that you see the save button up there and i can give it a name if i want this is i don't know this is april 20th club tabs and i save it <laughs> yeah the 420 club hey We've got a title for today's episode. It's the 420 Club. <laughs> so wait a minute. I'm I'm on Google Chrome. And where did you say this add-on thing is on my bar? Oh, yeah, well, it needs to be added. You need to add your, your – this extension icon right here. When you have oh. – yeah, when you have mm -hmm. extensions installed, then this button appears this on your bar. So Actually, the, I have Session Buddy installed. <laughs> oh, great. There you go. We have probably talked about it before. Yeah, and I'm going to save it right now, and it's give it a name, 420. There yeah. we go. Thank you. Because when I'm, I'm doing my shopping, I, I often have a bunch of windows open, and so I would really like to, to keep that. Yes. Yeah. I, I find it very valuable because I, in fact, I've, I've had to get myself out of the habit of just shutting down a bunch of tabs to start something else up. So now I keep tabs open all the time. The problem is that you start using a lot of computer resources, leaving that stuff in memory. And so Session Buddy allows you to get it out of memory without losing all that organization. And when we do the, um, it's either Glary or Sneak Cleaner or whatever, it, it, it deletes all those kind of things when it keeps them clean. But I just found it was 10 months ago that we talked about it because I saved a goo <laughs> session that day. <laughs> there you go. Because it says saved saved sessions and um, saved 10 months ago. There's nine tabs and it's about and support. Okay, Scott. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I went to my extensions on uh, Opera, down to Manage Extensions, search for Sessions Buddy, and I didn't find it. On Opera, give me a Wait second. A minute. You need to get into whatever their store is. And I apologize, well, I just oh, don't- Manage Extensions. Yeah, is there a link there to get new extensions? Hey. I'm, I'm bringing up Opera right uh, now. Well, I- because that's oh, what, okay. if you don't already have I it, just, then you're going to have to get it. Well, I've added extensions before uh, to Opera. I'm, I'm right where you are now. I've gone into the extension. On Opera, it looks like a cube, the extensions. And then there's manage extensions. Come on. And get more extensions is where you want to go. And that will take you to the oh, Opera okay, well, extension store. Add-ons.opera.com forward slash en forward slash extensions. And there's got to be a session buddy in here because these are all based on Chrome now. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm back to my extensions. So Manage here's the extensions. Oh, get more extensions. I got it. Yeah. I got it. Found it. Here, here I am right now looking for it. Session, buddy. No, it doesn't come up under... Did I spell it right? No, session. I, I did. I plural. It's session, one in the session, singular. Session buddy is the name of it, I guess. Session buddy. So okay. now if it isn't here in the Opera Store, haven't found what you need, download the Chrome extensions and check out the Chrome Web Store. I've I've done this as well. There yeah. is there is an extension that allows you to run Chrome extensions, and so you could install that and then install Session Buddy from the Chrome Store. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Yeah, here, install Chrome extensions. This is an extension for 
Opera to allow you to install Chrome extensions, and then you can go and install Chrome extensions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lunchtime. And on that note, we will say, until next week, tech, tech on. on. <laughs> you guys have an Don't awesome forget. week. Thanks you, for being bye here. Bye. bye, Fred. You owe me a caricature. A caricature. That's right. Bye. And I did forget. I did absolutely forget. Oh, sure. As soon as he got his power back, he forgets everything. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, uh -oh, Bill. There. Check it out. Check it out. Oh, awesome. Where'd that? Where, where'd you get that done? In San Carlos. Our first trip, our first trip to San Carlos, there was an um, art market that they were doing a fundraiser for Castaway Kids. Yeah. And the artist, Susan, uh, I can't read her, read her last name. Anyways, she um, she was doing portraits, and you had to make a 100 peso donation. So we got that for 100 pesos, and it's it was really good. The next time we saw her was a year later, and uh, the one that she did that time, it, it's, it's not as good. It's darker, and Bill's beard looks like it's black. And, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a pencil drawing. All right. All right, Cheryl, well, we'll see you next week. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Adios. Thanks for all the good ideas, Sandy. <laughs> well, this has been the San Carlos Computer Club. I'm looking for there. I am. This is Scott Stimson from International Computer Solutions saying if you need help out there on the Internet, I'd appreciate it if you gave me a shot. It's scott at international.cs.net. Look for our website. And if you're interested in, in any of these meetings, the San Carlos Computer Club, everyone's welcome to join us. We love all tech enthusiasts. And you can find out about our club at sccclub.org or look for us on those social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so on. Until next week, tech on. Let me stop this recording and...